Hello everyone, my name is Yvonne Johnston. I'm a consciousness coach and a developer of conscious leaders. My great desire in life is to facilitate for people a simpler, easier, happier life. A life where they can let go of the stuff that's stopping them from stepping into their brilliance, from showing up 100%. And one of the things that does that to people is people pleasing. So I've already spoken to you about this before, but I want to unpack a few more of the people-pleasing assumptions that drive people-pleasing behavior. Because in the end, being a people-pleaser is probably making you feel absolutely exhausted because you give endlessly. And the first myth I want to explode is that if I do things for people, they're gonna do nice stuff back for me. And that, of course, is based on the expectation that if you give, people will give back equally to you. And they very seldom do. Mainly because the expectation that is in your head is not in theirs. You always expect, you assume that people are going to behave the way you behave. That's where assumption comes from. And that's where expectation comes from. And I'm going to put it to you that all disappointment comes from expectation. When you expect something in return, you are inevitably disappointed. The second myth I want to explode is that I know how to make other people happy. But the truth is you don't. Do other people know how to make you happy? No, they don't. Only you know how to make you happy and only they know how to make themselves happy. And that's their journey, that's their job. And I mean, I've got a friend who's so determined that she knows how to make other people happy that she's almost made her friends uncomfortable to the extent where they eventually called her and said, please stop, because you're making us feel anxious. You're making us feel as if there's this weight of expectation on us because you keep giving and giving to us. And we don't know what, we don't want it. And we don't know how to give back to you. So it's a, it cr almost creates a discomfort, even though the intention is fabulous and pure and wonderful, but it comes across incorrectly. The third assumption is that if I'm a people pleaser, it shows how kind and generous I am. Well, yes, it does, but if it goes hand in hand with an agenda, the agenda undermines everything. It takes you into an area of being corruptible. It takes you into an area of inauthenticity because people get that. They get that you're trying to do something to get something in return. And it's not necessarily kind and generous. The fourth myth is, I'm Mr. Nice Guy. That's what I do. I stop people feeling pain. Um, you know, I watched a training some time ago where, um, I mean, it was a, it was a self-transformation training. So there's quite a lot of introspection and quite a lot of breakdowns that happen and quite a lot of coming to terms with the stuff that we accumulate in our lives. And we had one participant who kept leaping up to try and stop people feeling their pain, putting his arms around them and telling him it was going to be okay, it's all going to be okay. But actually all he was doing was interfering in their process. The truth is that you can't stop everybody's pain and nor should you. And just think about that for a second. Who would you be if you've never felt any pain? You wouldn't have, ha have had any growth. You wouldn't have learned anything. You would be a shadow of yourself. So pain very often is the only way that we can create growth. So trying to stop other people's pain is not healthy. I watch parents doing this with their kids. They don't want their kids to cry. They don't want their kids to be hurt. But that's how we learn. That's how children learn to make choices about friends at school and who they should be with and who they shouldn't be with. So often pain is the greatest gift that you can give someone. And the fifth myth I want to blast out of the water is that you can't say no. That's a very famous saying, I can't say no. Well, that's just not the truth, actually. Because I can't is the lie. Everyone can say no. You're choosing not to say no. And I want you to think about what you're compromising when you don't say no. You see, as you start learning to say no, what you're starting to say yes to is yourself. You're starting to say, yes, that's what I want. That's what I choose. And we talked about that in the previous video about the difference between selfish and self-love. But I can't say no is not the truth. 
And it's a very important thing to start learning to say no. So that's your exercise for this week. It's to start venturing into that territory and trying to put your foot in the water to put yourself first and to say no to stuff that just doesn't work for you.